Lloyd Austin III. Well, let's give the band and the chorus another round of applause. That was absolutely outstanding. Good morning, President Biden, Dr. Biden, Vice President Harris, Mr. Imhoff, distinguished guests. I am absolutely honored to be here with you this morning. And thank you, General Milley, for your leadership. To our Gold Star families and to all who remember a fallen American hero today, I know that each Memorial Day brings new waves of both pride and pain. And on behalf of the Department of Defense, Please accept our country's deepest gratitude for all that you have given and our deepest sympathies for all that you have lost. We pledge again today to ensure that you and your families have the support that you need and deserve. You will always be a part of our military family. And we hold in our hearts all those who fell to defend the country that they love. Each of them has a story. And one of the stories of the graves here at Arlington belongs to Chaplain Charles Waters. He was a Catholic priest who signed up to serve during the Vietnam War and to support his teammates in body and soul. And after a year-long deployment, he volunteered to extend his tour for another six months. And one November day in 1967, his battalion hit fierce fighting. And Chaplain Waters ran unarmed into the battle, exposed to mortar fire, bullets, and automatic weapons. He helped get wounded soldiers to safety, and he gave last rites to the fallen. At one point, he saw a U.S. paratrooper in shock in the line, and in the line of enemy fire. Chaplain Waters hoisted the paratrooper on his shoulders and carried him to safety. And tragically, later that day, Chaplain Waters was killed. And for his extraordinary heroism, this paratrooper, patriot, and priest, who volunteered twice, once to serve and once to extend his tour, was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. This year, our country celebrates the 50th anniversary of our all-volunteer force. And the life of Charles Waters, Charles Waters offered a preview of the vigor and the valor of the, of the American warriors who have chosen to step up and serve from 1973 until this day. Our all-volunteer force has blended military power with moral power and combine the force of American arms with the strength of people who freely choose to stand guard over our democracy. In 1970, the Gates Commission recommended eliminating conscription. And its formal report predicted that an all-volunteer force will strengthen our freedoms and our armed forces. And it did. Every time a qualified American stands up and raises their hand and serves with honor from any corner of the country, from any background, color, or creed, this exceptional nation becomes even safer and stronger. Every fallen hero has a story. It is our duty to remember those we have lost. It is our honor to stand with their families, and it is our sacred obligation to remember all that you have given. So let us strive to honor the memory of our fallen by writing the next chapters in America's, America's sto story of service. And let us stand with all who pledge their lives to defend human freedom and let us come together as one nation to strengthen our democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, our Commander-in-Chief has long been a champion of our men and women in uniform. 
and of the military families who serve right alongside them. And on this day of sorrow and service, it is my absolute honor to introduce the President of the United States. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please. 155 years ago, retired Union General James Garfield spoke here at Arlington, marking our nation's first Memorial Day. Standing amid rows and rows of marble stones, many of his own fallen soldiers among them, he asked, what brought these men here? What high motive led them to welcome death? And he answered his own question. He said, our nation's life. My fellow Americans, Jill, Vice President Harris, Second Gentleman Enhoff, Secretary Austin, Secretary McDonough, Secretary Mayorkas, General Milley, and uh, most importantly, veterans, servicemen and women, and their survivors. Today, we once again gather in this sacred place at this solemn hour to honor fallen heroes, to once again stand amid the rows and rows of marble stones and bear witness to the brave women and men who served and sacrificed for our freedom and for our future. Those who died so our nation might live. Every year, as a nation, we undertake this right of remembrance. For we must never forget the price that was paid to protect our democracy. We must never forget the lives these flags, flowers, and marble markers represent a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, a sister, a spouse, a friend, an American. Every year we remember, and every year it never gets easier. To all those here and across the nation who are grieving the loss of a loved one who wore the uniform, our Gold Star families, to all those with loved ones still missing and unaccounted for, I know how painful it can be, how it can reopen that, rip open that black hole in the center of your chest you feel like you're just sinking into. Bringing you back to that, that exact moment you heard that knock on the door or the telephone ring. The exact moment you had to tell your children that mom or dad would not be coming home. The hurt is still real. It's still raw. Tomorrow marks eight years since we lost our son, Bo. Our losses are not the same. He didn't perish in the battlefield. It was cancer that stole him from us a year after being deployed as a major in the United States Army National Guard in Iraq. As it is for so many of you, the pain of his loss is with us every day, but particularly sharp on Memorial Day. Still clear, tomorrow's his anniversary. But so is the pride Jill and I feel in this service, as if I can still hear him saying, Dad, it's my duty, Dad. It's my duty, duty. That was the code my son lived by and all those you lost live by. It's the creed that millions of service members have followed from the fields of Yorktown to the shores of Normandy, 
to the rice paddies of Pusan, to the valleys of Kandahar, to the mountains of Sinjar and beyond, many of whom never returned home. Throughout history, these women and men laid down their lives, not for a place or a person or a president, but for an idea unlike any other idea in all of human history. The idea, the idea of the United States of America. This sanctuary honors that sacrifice and tells their stories. And in turn, it tells our story, the American story, the story of the patriot who died to deliver a nation where everyone is entitled to certain inalienable rights, among them life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. The story of hundreds of thousands of soldiers who shed their blood to make these words real. The story of the brave Americans who fought the forces of fascism and died for preservation of democracy. As we're reminded by the hundreds of graves here in Section 60 of Arlington and across our nation, the story of the women and men who sacrificed everything to keep democracy safe and secure during the last two decades. Each of them, each of them, a link in the chain of honor that stretches back to our founding fathers in those days, unbreaking, unbending, not just in their duty and devotion, but something even deeper in their faith in us, their faith in us, that we will be worthy of their sacrifice. Our service members have always embodied the highest expectations of our democracy. They've always held faith in our country and all that we could be, a citadel of liberty, a beacon of freedom, for our democracy is our strength, the wellspring of possibilities, and the source of endless, endless renewal. It's how we've been able to constantly change and adapt through the centuries. It's why we've always emerged from every challenge we face stronger than we entered it. It's how we come together as one nation, united, and why there's nothing we can't do in America when we do it together. It's a truth we celebrate this year was remarked. We mark 75 years of a desegregated military, 75 years of women's full integration, 50 years of an all-volunteer force. Throughout the annals of history, our troops have fought for our democracy and, if necessary, died for it. Today, their service and sacrifice and that of their families echoes far beyond those silent stones out there. We've seen the strength of our NATO alliance built from the bonds that we forever forged in the fires of two world wars. We see it in the troops still standing sentinel on the Korean Peninsula, preserving peace side by side with our allies. We see in every base, every barrack, every vessel around the globe where our military proudly serves and stands as a force for good in the world. And just as they've kept the ultimate faith to our country, to our democracy, we must keep the ultimate faith to them. As a nation, and people have heard me say this for a long time, as a nation, we have many obligations. But I believe in every fiber on my being, we have only one truly sacred obligation, to prepare those we send into harm's way and care for them and their families when they come home and when they don't. It's a sacred obligation, not based on party or politics, but on a promise, a promise to unite all of us. 
There's nothing more important, nothing more sacred, nothing more American. And together, over the last two and a half years, we've worked to make good on a, that promise, passing more than 25 bipartisan laws to support our service members, their families, caregivers, and survivors. That includes the PACT Act, most significant law in our nation's history, Tell millions of veterans who were exposed to toxic substances and burn pits during their military service. Pits the size of football fields that incinerated the wastes of war, such as tires, chemicals, jet fuel, and so much more. To many of our nation's warriors that have selflessly served, only to return home and suffer from the permanent effects of this poisonous smoke. Too many have died. Excuse the personal reference like my son, Bo, or like Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson, for whom the act is named. Last year, after I signed the PACT Act, I handed the pen to his daughter, Real. She and her grandmother are with us today. After I handed her the pen, this beautiful little girl is sitting over there. Thank you for waving, baby. <laughs> we lost half of her world, her whole world, held the pen in her hand and looked at me and said, thank you for my daddy. Thank you for my daddy. God love you, honey. But I don't think she was just thanking me. She was thanking all of us, everyone who fought so hard and came together to keep our promise to our veterans, to keep the faith with our heroes. On this day, we come together again to reflect to remember, but above all, to recommit to the future our fallen heroes fought for. That generation of service members who died for a future grounded in freedom, democracy, equality, tolerance, opportunity, and yes, justice. We use those words all the time, but we've seen of late here and around the world that they have to continually be fought for, not just for some, but for all. This is more important than just our system of government. It's the very soul of America, a soul that was forged by our nation's first patriots, a soul that triumphed over trials and testing less than a century later. A soul that endured because of the sacrifice of generations and generations of the service members ever since. Together, we're not just the fortunate inheritors of their legacy. We must be the keeper of their mission, the bearers of the flame of freedom that kept burning bright for nearly 247 years. That that's the truest memorial to their lives. Our actions every day to ensure that our democracy endures, our Constitution endures, and the soul of our nation, our decency endures. Ladies and gentlemen, 155 years ago, our ancestors stood here and asked themselves, what brought our heroes to this hallowed ground? What high motive led these brave souls, as General Garfield said, to welcome death. Today, we must ask ourselves, what can we do, what must we do to pull the vision for which they lived and which they died? Today, it's on all of us, all of us, to ensure that sacrifice was not in vain, to keep working toward a more perfect union, one where all women and all men are created equal. We're the only nation in the world built on an idea. Every other nation 
is formed based on things like geography, ethnicity, religion. We're the only nation in the world built on an idea that we are all created equal. We haven't always lived up to it, but we've never walked away from it. And today, standing together to honor those Americans who dared all and gave all for our nation, we can say clearly, we never will. God bless all those who gave their lives so our nation might live. God bless their families. And may God protect our troops today and always. Thank you.